Well, we've been working on solving equations with two unknowns, but you'll notice this button says two plus unknowns. We wouldn't stop torturing you at two unknowns. We'd have to go on to more. But fortunately for you, we usually stop at three. But that should only be a window into seeing how you could solve even more. So we're going to look at simultaneous equations by elimination with three unknowns. Look, I'm going to begin a problem. This time, look, we have three independent equations in three unknowns. And we want to use this to show you that if you have three unknowns, it would be possible to use elimination or some other technique and get down to two equations in two unknowns and then one equation in one unknown because this time there is only one x, one y, and one z that make all three of these independent equations true. So it's a little confusing but I've tried to make it orderly so you can see again we have these scroll bars just like we did in the other elimination look at what they do for you they multiply 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 and what you have to do is just ignore one of them and let's just look at the top two and let's just start with X might as well begin at the beginning oh look they both have a four so I don't have to multiply them by anything except one but I hope you're already objecting no is how one is not enough. Look, when I multiply this by one, I have a negative four and a negative four. One of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So I'm going to multiply this one by negative one. Now look what happens over here. We have a negative four x and a positive four x. They can eliminate. Negative four y plus five y is one y. Negative five z plus two z is negative 3z and this is whatever it is I'm pushing the add button between these two and you'll see that I get 1y minus 3z equals negative 3. Got that? Now we're going to use the second two equations and ignore the first one and just work on eliminating here. So 4 and 1 what do they have in common? I mean, what, could, what could they both divide into a whole number of times is what I should actually say. So the magic number here would be 4. And I already have a 4 here, so what I need here is a negative 4 here. Hope you saw how I multiplied this one by negative. I got a positive in this one. Or I could have just let this be 1 and let this one be negative 4, it, whichever way you like, just so that it turns out over here that we have one positive and one negative. So I'm going to push the Add button. And you see what happens. See, negative 5y plus 12y was the 7y. Negative 2z plus the 2 is the 10. Negative 31, this gives me 41. Look, I had three equations in three unknowns. I've followed all the rules of multiplying and adding, and I have reduced this down to two equations in two unknowns. Now I'm going to use these equations and bop them down here. And now we're back to two equations and two unknowns. I want to get rid of the y, so I'm going to multiply this by 7. My dog is waking up again. I am so sorry. We get this to match. We push add, and we find out that z is equal to 2. Now I'm going to make a match on the z's and find out what the y is. 3 and 10, 30 would be my number of choice. Multiply by 10. I'm trying to beat my dog. I'm not trying to beat my dog. I'm trying to finish before my dog starts to bother you. And so I can get these to both be 30, one positive and one negative. Push add. And I get 31y is equal to 93. So y is equal to 3. And now I will take one of these other equations and substitute these in. I don't really want to go through this all again to find what the x is, so I'm going to have to like think. Let's see. I'm looking around for the simplest equation that has an x, and it looks like it's this third one. So 
indulge me here. Let's see. Maybe I need to get a piece of paper because I'd hate to make a mistake right now. We're this far along. So I'm going to say negative 1x and then we say minus 3y. Well, I know that y is 3, so that would be like minus 9. And z is 2, so that would be like minus 6 equals negative 18. So I get minus x minus 15 equals negative 18. Minus x is negative 3. And x looks like it's 3. At least I hope so. So now, I, I hope you saw what I did. I took these two values and plugged them in here and found what the missing x was. I used substitution. Now I'm going to check and hopefully we win. So we could got one correct. We could go on and do another one. I don't know whether my dog will hold up, but let's try it. If not, I will cut this one short. <clears throat> okay, first thing we want to do is eliminate these x's. Magic number is 6. I'm going to multiply this by negative 6 and this by 1 and kill off the x's. Now I'm going to kill off the x's here, so I'll leave this one 1 and this one be negative 1. Kill off these x's. Use these equations. Come down here. I'm going to eliminate the y's. The magic number is, what is it? I hope I heard you. 10, so I'm going to multiply this by 5, and this one by 2, and I got a plus 10 and a negative 10. Add those, and we find out that z is equal to 2. I'm going to look for the magic number for the z's. What would eliminate the z's? Look at it. What is it? 5. So to get a 5 here, I only need a 1 here. And to get a 5 here, I need a 5, but I need it to be negative. So I'm going to multiply by negative 5. I've got the 5z, negative 5z. Add. I find out that y is equal to mm, 6, 7's 42. Yeah, it looks like it's 6, negative 6. Now, I've got these two solutions. I'm going to use my paper again. I'm cheating. I'm going to use these two solutions and look up here and try to find the easiest equation that has three unknowns. It looks like it's the first one. So I'm going to write down negative x and then minus 2 times the minus 6 will so be plus 12. And minus 3 times the z, 2, here's, so that'd be minus 6 equals negative 2. So it looks like minus x plus 6 is equal to negative 2. Minus x is equal to minus 8. So x must be 8. I hope you see that I substituted these back in here. And I got x is 8. And check. We win. We've got 2 right now. If you're up to a challenge, three equations in three unknowns, you can master them. With all these helps, it's kind of easy. It's, it's easy to make a mistake when you're having to do all the multiplyings and addings yourself. So if you do one of these by hand, I suggest that you try to get really organized and keep your work very, very neat. Messy work will not cut it with simultaneous equations and three unknowns. I probably said this before, but one summer I worked out at Oak Ridge National Labs because they thought we teachers should know what real mathematicians do. And since I had the opportunity to run into many scientists, one of my questions that I would ask as a teacher interviewing a scientist, I'd say, how many unknowns do you work with on a daily basis? And I think you'll be interested to know that the most typical answer I got was mm, somewhere around 20. That means when they're solving a real world problem, they need 20 equations that are independent of each other in order to solve those 20 unknowns. So that would take a little while and some techniques that are beyond what we teach you in high school. 
So, but 20 equations in 20 unknowns could reduce down to 19 equations in 19 unknowns, and 19 equations in 19 unknowns could reduce down to 18 equations in 18 unknowns, and you could go down and you could keep working your way down. I hope you understand in principle, three unknowns can be reduced down to two unknowns, and two unknowns to one unknown, and then you just systematically work your way through the universe and solve an equation. Isn't algebra wonderful?